When it comes to the COVID-19 modeling, it can all be a little bit confusing out there, especially if you're not uh, into numbers as much. So ABC 15 data guru Garrett Archer is joining us now on the phone to explain what all of this means. Garrett? Yes, so what they did, uh, we actually have a PowerPoint uh, is what we're going off of. And uh, this, this model that they're using appears to be uh, very similar to the Imperial College London model that was first used uh, in hotspots like Wuhan and uh, Italy. And what this does is it makes some assumptions. Like one of the assumptions it makes is uh, that asymptomatic cases of COVID-19 is 18.5% and that hospitalization cases are going to be about 16% with a death rate of about 1.6%. Uh, what's particular to our model uh, that's different is it has five scenarios that they're using to make the projections. Uh, the scenarios take into things like how many COVID cases are known. Some of the scenarios think we only know as little as 9% of the COVID cases. And then also the continued transmission based on uh, moderate or maximum social distancing, as well as whether or not summer heat could uh, play a factor or not. And yep. so what they did was they, they likely ran these through a simulation and uh, they came out with some projections showing that our COVID-19 cases can be as high as 40,000, as low as 10,000. And this is all in mid-May. So uh, as, as Melissa already talked about with the hospitals, that, that, that's the same. Yeah, as you said all along, our, our graphs are only as good as the data coming in. Our projections can only be as good as the input. So you're looking at uh, stuff all across the country, all across uh, counties here in Arizona as well. What snapshot of data have you found in the past, let's say, 24 hours that you find the most intriguing? I think what we're seeing right now that, that is intriguing is how, how the models are responding to what they call the hard truth data point, which is the COVID-19 deaths. So a lot of these models are fluctuating, as, as the governor pointed out, uh, based on the number of deaths that Arizona is reporting on a daily basis. Like today and yesterday, we, both, we reported 21 deaths. Uh, however, the, the reality is that these deaths are um, happening over time. They're not happening in a 24-hour period. And what that's doing is it's causing a lot of noise in the models. So some of these models are, are changing their death estimates from, uh, like the University of Washington model had us at 270 deaths uh, two, uh, a week ago. And after some reporting, it, it moved up, uh, us up to 480. So uh, there's a lot of noise that, that has to be taken into consideration with these models. Uh, you've got to be a lot like me hitting refresh, 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 hoping for uh, a new projection to come out because this does lag. Uh, in fact, this model today, the one that we're looking at, the IHME model, it, it lags by 48 hours already. Yes. Uh, they, in fact, it hasn't even taken into account the uh, the last two days of the 21 uh, peak death. Right. So, Right so, now it says 48, and once they adjust upward to account for those two days, I, I believe it's going to adjust dramatically. Yeah, I, uh, I am with you. We'll be watching it and, of course, reporting those numbers the second they come in. Garrett, always good insight. Thank you.